Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel, Service Management Leadership. Thank you for joining us on this video. Today's topic has to do with configuration management, configuration items, we'll call them CIs, and the different types of these CIs, configuration items. There are several different kinds, and I wanted to do each one of them justice, so we're going to fly through them. Please feel free to leave feedback below if there's something I did not say uh, in a way that was clear to you or we could help at answer questions. So your first type of CI is your service life cycle CI. It's a business case, service management plan, service management, service life cycle plan, service design package, release package, release and change, test plans, things of that nature. And so they show the service provider services, how they're going to be delivered, expected benefits, at what cost, and when that will be realized. Secondly, we have the service CIs. So we care about our service capability assets. We care about our management, organization structure, our processes, our knowledge, our people, our capital, things of that nature. Also, we have service resources, resource assets, like financial systems, applications, information, data, infrastructure, and facilities, as well as people. People shows up in a lot of these. Other service CIs are very unique, and that's why I wanted to fly through them, but give them a little bit of explanation. We have our service models. Those are CIs, because if anything is a CI, that means to be changed, it has to go through change management. That's why we want these to be CIs. Our service packages. We want to make sure when they change, it goes through change management and has the right visibility. Even our release packages. The way we package releases, we need to make sure they go through change management. Service acceptance criteria. Oh, that's a great CI, isn't it? We need to understand what are we accepting as a service? It has to go through change management. If there's a, if that server's missing that it resides on, that's an incident. We need to make sure these have the control of configuration management. Now there are four other types of CIs that I'm going to race through and give just a little bit of detail. We have organizational CIs, configuration items. Think of like your organizational strategy. We want to make sure that's controlled. We also care about our internal CIs. Think about software, applications, hardware, infrastructure, all of those things internal to an organization. Those are obviously CIs, aren't they? Because they support uh, our services and everything else. We also have our external CIs. Think about our suppliers, our third parties. Some of their equipment, some of their applications may be CIs to us especially in the SaaS word, world, software as a service. And lastly, we have interface CIs. This is one I want to make sure I explain very well. In a CNDB, we have these relationships of CIs going everywhere. But what is very important is the interface. We want to know what is the interface between X and Y. Because if that's down, and we're not changing either of the other CIs, we have an incident on the other two CIs, but we want to make sure that that interface, whenever there's a change, it has to go through change management. This happens more and more as our application to infrastructure, service operations, processes, it becomes quicker. Those cycles, especially DevOps, think how quickly things go in through interfaces. We want to make sure those are covered through our change management, incident management, all of our service management processes. This is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Please like or share the video. Subscribe to our channel. Leave us feedback below. We'd love to see it. We'd love to have those discussions with you. Have a great, great day. Bye.